Hello, dear friends. This is Yule Humphreys, and I'm glad to be here to share a word with you again, another word, a, a word that I believe that God will bless to your heart today, and it's from the Word of God, and it's just about a five or ten minute message that I've entitled, that life is made up of our spirit and our soul and our body. We are made, a, we are really a triune individuals, like we serve a triune God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We're made up of, God created us, and we're made up of spirit and soul and body. And so we need to see this. Number one, the Bible says in Hebrews, in the fourth chapter, verse 12, and the word of God is quick, alive, a living word, and it's powerful, and it's sharper than any sword, piercing to the dividing of soul and spirit, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intentions of the heart. Here it says the Word of God divides the soul and the spirit. Now, if it divides the soul and spirit, then there's a difference in the soul and in the spirit. They're not the same. So many times through the years we preach that just believe in your soul and spirit and as if they're one. But here it says the Word of God divides the soul and the spirit. So there are two distinct features in the life of every one of us. <clears throat> Now the Bible teaches us the difference between the soul and the spirit. It teaches us that in the beginning, in Genesis, the first chapter, God created man and breathed into him the breath of life, and, and man became a living soul. Now, then he, that when he created life in him, he created life and gave him a soul that was he could think, he could decide, he made, he had to say he could make decisions. He had uh, emotions, he could feel anger or joy, it, it, and then he, he had a will. In other words, he had the power to choose and make decisions. All of these things come from the soul. Everybody has that. Everyone born in this world are born with a soul. But then he breathed in him the breath of life, which was also a spirit. And it was a spirit in him. And that's where God dwelt, and Adam and Eve was in their spirit. God is a spirit, and he dwells with us in the spirit of God. And so we see then that the Holy Spirit was given, I mean, rather the spirit, the human spirit was given by God into our first parents. Now, he told them, he said, now, if you take, if disobey me and eat of the tree in the garden of life, he said, you will die the day you eat it. Now, old Satan, the devil, tempted Eve and said, he won't, you won't die. You just, you'll be as great as God. And there was pride born in the heart of Eve. And she said, all right, and she took it. And so when she did, she realized what she had done. And she ran and hid. And Adam did the same thing. He took the apple, he, he sinned with her, and then he went and hid with her. The fact is, there's something died in them that day. They went on live physically for about 500 years, but there was something that died within them, just like God said would die, and that was their spirit, where God dwelt. And as soon as God left them, then they were afraid. And they ran out and they realized they were naked and they tried to cover themselves with leaves. And so it was that whoever born in this world today is born without a spirit. They're born in this old sinful world with a soul. They can think, they can decide, they can choose, they can have emotions, but they don't have a spirit where God dwells. They don't have God. They're without God. And when the Jesus talking to Nicodemus said, you must be born again, you've got to be born the second time, a spiritual birth. And when you do, the Holy Spirit comes into your new spirit. God gives you a new spirit when you're saved. If you're a Christian, you believe in Jesus Christ, you have a spirit as well as a soul in your body. Now, when you have that spirit, it's real, it's there. Over in the Bible, it says that uh, we find that we, we recognize the fact that it needs to be divided. Why should it be divided? Because the Spirit is where God dwells. And He wants to dwell in you and through you. And in order to do this, He does that through your spirit. So your spirit has to be divided. It's, it's mingled with your soul. It has to be divided so it will have jurisdiction over the soul. So that you'll have jurisdiction of the Lord will have jurisdiction through your spirit over your thinking, over your speaking, over your emotions, over your decisions you make. You see, you, they're to be made spiritually instead of physically and mentally. 
they're to be made spiritually. Now they'll come through your mind, and they'll come through your volition, and you will, and your in your will, and you will make decisions according to the Holy Spirit's working in your life. But you'll do it through your spirit. So we need to see that we need that new heart. The Bible said in Ezekiel the 36th chapter that we need to recognize something that's very important, and I, I, I uh, and and, and uh, it's it's important enough that we need to see it and recognize. 26 and 27. And the Lord said, I will take away your hard heart. I will give you a new heart, and I will give you a new spirit. You see. And then I'll put my spirit within you, and you shall be my people. And so God gives us a new spirit. And if you're a Christian, you've accepted Christ, you've got a new spirit. Whenever you believe in Jesus Christ as your Lord, you get a new spirit. The Bible says in Romans 8, 6, 16, The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. His spirit bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And so the Holy Spirit bears witness with our spirit, with our new heart, with our new spirit. And that's what's important. Over in 1 Thessalonians, the 5th chapter and verse, and uh, we read these words in verse uh, uh, 5 and 8, uh, 15. That we read, we, oh, let's see, where, where am I reading it? Let's see, just a minute. No, it's in 523, 523. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray that your whole spirit and your soul and your body be preserved unto the coming of our Lord. Here is the word says, I'm praying that your whole spirit and your soul and your body be preserved blameless to the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. And that's important because that's what we need to do. And now we recognize, and because of brevity of time, let me go now to the body. We have a spirit, we have a soul, and now we go to the body. The body is important. It's important to God. Over in the verse 12 of, of, uh, of Romans, it says this, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, that you present your body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. Holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And our bodies are important. These bodies are temporary. They're not going to last forever. Praise God. They're not going to last forever. There's coming a time when God's going to give us a new body and a new spirit. And we'll be, we'll be, we'll have a new spirit. Paul said that we will uh, have a, have a new body in the day that we go to meet God. And it'll not be like these bodies. It'll be eternal, glorious, no more pain, no more sorrow, no more getting old. But while we're here in this life, we have these bodies. And we ought to thank God for the body that you have. It's a body God gave you. And you need to give it to God along with your spirit and your soul. You need to give it to God and let him have his way in your life. Because he wants it. It's his body. Be thankful for your body. Be thankful for whatever kind of body you've got. Whatever kind of nationality you are. Whatever color of skin. Whatever size. Oh, precious God. Whatever gender, male or female, be grateful for who you are. Uh, I had, uh, some years ago, I was talking to a little lady that was paraplegic. She had twisted limbs and had to go in a wheelchair all of her life. And her name was Nancy. And I said to her one day, Nancy, uh, I, I'm just going to tell you the truth. One day you're going to have a brand new body, a body that's not affected by any kind of limitations. It's going to be an eternal glorious body. Oh, she said, I know, but she said, Brother Humphreys, I like my body because it's the one God gave me. I never will forget that. From that day, I've been thankful for my body. Oh, that little lady, she said, it's the one God gave me. So be thankful for your body. Amen. It's the one God gave you. So here is spirit and soul and body, all of them. All through Jesus Christ our Lord. Be sure you're going to heaven where we'll have a brand new body, but we'll have a soul and spirit with that body that'll live forever. Hallelujah. I want you to be sure you're saved and born again. Born again. Oh, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. Pray this brief prayer with me. Say, if you're not sure, say, Dear God, please forgive me. I believe in Jesus. I believe he died for me. I believe he rose again. I believe he's coming back. Come in my heart and help me live for you as the Lord of my life. 
Praise God. Amen. Pray that prayer like that and you'll live forever. And you'll be safe and saved in spirit, soul, and body. Find you a good church and go to it and worship God. Read your Bible and pray. Oh, the cross where Jesus redeems us, gives us a new spirit, and redeems us. And one day, he's going to present us with a new body. See from his head, his hands, and his feet, sorrow and blood flow mingled down. Did ever such love or sorrow meet, or thorns compose so rich a crown? Were the whole realm of nature mine, that were a present far too small, such love, amazing, so divine, demands my spirit, my soul, my body, my all. Praise the Lord. God bless you. God loves you. And I love you. May it be that you'll be with him always.